Hello everybody and welcome to the Merwin Music YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be making some XLR to TRS audio cables. Okay, so I have here the rack case for my PA system and I just got the Behringer X-Air XR18 mixer, which is pretty cool. And whenever possible for live setup, I like to keep as many things plugged into each other as I possibly can. So I would love to leave plugged in the output of my Behringer mixer into my power amplifier and also an auxiliary output to go to our headphone distribution uh, splitter thing that's in the rack. So in order to do that, I need to plug something into these XLR outputs on the mixer. But as you can see, if I just use a regular XLR cable, it's gonna give me problems where I can't close the lid of the mixer. So on this end, what I'm gonna do is use some right angle female XLR adapters. So I can plug those in like that, leave them plugged in and still be able to get the lid closed. Okay, so that cable comes out of my mixer with that right angle XLR, and then it needs to come down here to plug into my power amplifier. Now I have the same problem on this end, where if I used a regular XLR cable, it would not fit and I wouldn't be able to put the back door of this case on. And if I used a right angle XLR connector here, you could see the cable would either run into this rear rack ear, or I would have to angle it a different way, either over here where it would block this fan, or up and over the top, which I don't want to do because we store extra speaker cables in here. So I want to keep those out of the way and down around the corner so when we're sliding these in and out, they don't catch on my input cables. Which means for this end, I think the best solution is going to be to use some TRS right angle quarter inch plugs. So you can see those will let me put the back door on and I'll have plenty of room to come off of those and sneak around this gap here to hide my cables nicely. Okay, so an XLR cable has three pins that it connects up to. Pin number one is generally your ground or the shield for the cable. Pin two is usually the hot signal, and pin three is what they call the cold or negative signal, and that's what balances the cable. So if you didn't have that third pin, you would just have an unbalanced cable, which would be similar to just a normal guitar jack that has a sleeve or shield ground and tip hot signal. But it's this third cable that produces the balanced signal and gives us lower noise on an XLR cable than a regular guitar cable. So we want to keep this a balanced signal. That means instead of just a tip and ring connector for the other end, we're going to use this quarter inch tip ring sleeve. Now this has the same pin out of one, two, three, only my one is going to be my shield and my ground. It's gonna be back here. My two is gonna be my hot signal at the tip of the connector, and my three is gonna be that ring inside the middle of the connector. Okay, so for the wire to make this cable from, I'm gonna consult this milk crate here. Now this is just a bunch of old and discarded XLR cables and various other things. From my experience, most of the time, what's wrong with a cable is just the ends that go bad. And these days it's really not worth putting new ends on a lot of these cheaper cables because you can just buy a whole cable for cheaper than you can get ends for. But it comes in handy for something like this where I have plenty of mic cable and I can snip off my ends and use this cable to make a new one. Okay, so I have here the length of wire that I'm going to use to make my cable and the female XLR adapter. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take this apart. All right, so we can see we have here our solder tabs with pins one, two, and three. This is a mirror image of the other end, which is one, two, and three. So again, we just want to always be conscious of what tab we're soldering to to make sure we don't mess any of this up. So one, two, and three. So now we're going to take the end of our cable. Now I find a lot of times rather than using the wire strippers on these big rubber cables that a lot of times it's easier to just use an X-Acto knife. And we can see here I have my ground or shield cable, my hot red wire for my hot signal and my blue wire for my cold signal. Now you want to make sure before you get too far that you have everything assembled in the right order. 
So we don't want to solder that inner core on the end here and realize, shoot, we can't slide on this strain relief and this cap back here. So just take a second and make sure you got all these things on in the right order. So otherwise you'll have to unsolder these ends. And then once everything is all packed into the connector, I like to go ahead and flow more solder around the shield wire just because it likes to fray and I don't want any rogue wires sticking out anywhere. So we can just kind of melt that all in there and they won't go anywhere. Okay, so now at the other end of the cable, I need a right angle quarter inch. And I have here actually two styles of jack. Now this is just a cheaper right angle pancake jack. And I have a nicer right angle Nutrix jack. Now this is definitely one of those things that you get what you pay for. So the first thing you notice is the strain relief is not adjustable on this pancake cable. Nothing's gonna tighten down on a cable. Which means if it's too thin, like this one, it'll just pull right out and all of that pressure is going to be right on your solder joint. But on the other hand, if your cable's too big, like this one that I have here, you literally can't close this connector with this big of a cable in there. So it's just something to wind out. Unless you kind of find the perfect mic cable, the strain relief on these is not great. Also, if we have a look inside, it's pretty decent in here with the tabs to solder to, but we notice we only have two. We only have our hot signal and our cold signal, and there's no ground tab to solder to inside of here, which means you either have to rely on just a compression fit with it by bending the shield over the cable and having it squeezed down around this, or you have to try and heat up this entire case to solder the ground to somewhere on the inside of here. So especially if this is your first time or your beginner at this, these are just not worth it. They're just going to cause you a huge headache and a pain to get together. We can see on the nicer Nutrick jacks, we got three tabs in here for our hot signal, cold signal, and ground, all to solder to, which is going to make it nice and easy. And we can see the way this goes together, this end slides over. We got this nice strain relief here that's going to really clamp down on the cable and keep it tight, and the whole thing will screw together nicely. Now I want to make sure before we go anywhere and start soldering anything that we go ahead and put anything like this, like I said, on there. So we're going to put this sleeve on there that needs to be the end because once we start soldering stuff up, we won't be able to push this on. Okay, so the XLR end of our cable was labeled nicely 1, 2, and 3 for which cable goes where, but on this end it's not labeled, so we want to know what each of these three tabs is. So I have my multimeter here set to continuity mode, and what I can do is just touch the tip of the connector and find which of these is going to be at the tip, which is this central peg right here. You can find which one's the ring which is gonna be this one right here, and my ground should be this tab right here. So I know I want to connect to one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the ground wire on this end, and what I can do is bend up this tab to make it a little bit easier for me to solder to, and I'm gonna cut this ground wire a little bit shorter. I don't need it to be this full length. Okay, so now that our cable is all done, the one last thing that we're going to do is test it. So we can just stick our multimeter in continuity mode into pin 1 in our XLR connector, and that should be the ground of our quarter inch. 
and nothing else. You can see it is. Put it in pin two, and that should be the tip, and nothing else, and it is. And now I can put it in pin three, and test that it's the ring, and nothing else. So this cable should work and should be good. Okay, so now you can see those XLR cables installed in the mixer. And because those are right angles, I can go ahead and close this lid and leave those plugged in. And it's the same thing around the back. I can leave those plugged into the amplifier and go ahead and put my back door on. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informational and it helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. But otherwise, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.